In this video, we're going to look at when two or three forces acting on an object, how will the vector diagram look like? Let's start with the first question over here. Now, you should be very familiar with this already. When there's a force of 3 newton and 4 newton acting on the object, and if you look at all these as some options here, 3 and 4 newton, they are placed in 90 degree to one another. So this is what you have been very familiar with and the resultant you also know that is this direction and 5 newton. Now one thing to take note is force is a vector quantity. Okay, Force is a vector quantity. It has both the magnitude, the size and the direction. Direction is very important. That's why you have vector diagram for forces or velocity vector quantities. So in, that means to say in layman term means these forces that you draw, let's say 3 newton, you can actually shift it around but the direction must still remain. So let's, what do I mean by that? Let's take a look at option A. So if this right now, the 3 newton is upwards and the 4 newton is to the right, it's a bit strange to you but it doesn't matter, you can treat this as the object. Okay, over here, 3 newton is upwards, 4 newton is acting to the right so I can shift the 4 Newton to this way it's the same alright so you know that when 3 and 4 are as such alright the resultant force of 5 Newton has to be diagonally to the right like that so A will be the answer okay oh I didn't know that's the answer so what how about B C and D why are they wrong so likewise this part here the resultant force you know should be along this line diagonally to the right so this is pointing downwards it's impossible to get that that will not be the direction of the resultant force of 3 and 4 newton so how about this one for option c so if you have an object here and one person pulls you 3 newton upwards and the other to the left you know that the resultant force is this direction so c is wrong and likewise for d if this is the object, 4 newton here, I still, the direction remains. I can shift it to this side and the 3 newton downwards. So if that's the case, 3 newton, 4 newton, you should know the resultant force is diagonally downwards like that. So this direction is wrong. So therefore, A is the correct answer. For this question, it's actually very similar to the previous one. Let's start with A. So there's a upward force of 3 newton pulling up. And there's a 4 newton pushing to the left so I can shift the 4 newton pulling to the left is similar 4 newton and you should know that the resultant force is diagonally upwards this way so this direction is wrong so A is wrong how about B B pulling upward and 4 newton to the right you will know that the resultant should be this direction so B is wrong and how about C C there's a force 3 newton pulling pushing it down so it's the same as pulling it down and 4 newton to the right and the resultant force will be diagonally downwards like that and that will be the answer C so let's take a look at D also so the object is here pushing it pulling it down 3 newton and 4 newton okay I can draw it this way or maybe to make it easier I draw the 4 newton this way so it's very easy to visualize your resultant force must be this direction. So D is wrong. All right. Now for this question, likewise, there are two forces, F1 and F2, acting on the object, in this case, a ship. Now let's side sidetrack a bit. If I have the ship here and the two forces, this is the horizontal line, and the two forces, F1 and F2, assume the magnitude, the size are the same and the angle apart is 30 degree from the horizontal line then straight away you know that the resultant force must be along this line horizontal line and in that direction but for this question f1 and f2 may not be the same and they are at 60 degree apart but they are not equally spaced apart uh, with respect to the horizontal line so but one thing for sure is when the boat is pull such a way the resultant force must be along here okay but I do not know exactly what direction but it's along that general direction R should be here so having said that okay let's look at the vector diagram uh, the options of ABCD let's take a look at A first 
Now your F1 okay is in this direction and that's correct so all these basically are correct you can shift it around but the direction is must be must remain so f1 is correct f1 is correct and your f2 your f2 is diagonally downwards like that so all are correct so basically you only need to focus on the resultant force that's the easiest and fastest way so as we mentioned the resultant force must be in this direction all right so to somewhere to the right and uh, these two are definitely wrong because the resultant must be somewhere around here if you complete the parallelogram so this or uh, the direction seems to be okay but the the sorry the direction is wrong it's opposite and therefore d is the answer now some of you may wonder it's like these two diagram totally different but remember i said this is the shift f2 is acting in this direction and f1 is acting in this direction so i can just shift this whole f1 down to here i don't change the magnitude i just shift it down i don't change the direction also so if here is 60 this will be 120 so all these are correct all right so let's go to the next question now for this last question here is a bit tricky okay let's pay attention to the question here there's a nail here heavy nail that's fixed firmly to the wall that means it's stationary and you should recall your newton first law all forces the three forces acting on the nail they are balanced and the resultant force the net force is zero so the pull of the string let's call it the tension t here and definitely the weight will be vertically down and because if you look at these two forces t and w you should know that the resultant force must be somewhere around here let's assume first all right somewhere to the right okay in order for it to be resultant force zero acting on the nail there must be another force r okay that must be counterbalanced this so it must be along this direction r can be here all right one thing for sure is the r has to be to the left direction not the right direction so having said that as mentioned just now let's use color coding the weight is in this direction let's look at all the weight for all the options all are correct because they are all pointing downwards so no issues with the direction and next let's go to the tension the tension is to the top right diagonally to the right and this is good this is wrong so b is wrong and c possible and d is wrong also so we eliminate b and d now let's go to the next one as mentioned as mentioned all right the, the r has to be diagonally to the left okay i'll explain more later so in this case can you see this r is to the right more towards the right so this is impossible therefore to say the answer will only be a but you might be wondering how come it's quite different from my original r okay from my diagram here i drew my r is like to the top left hand corner but this option a is slightly to the left to the bottom but remember i say that uh, we do not know the magnitude of the weight or the tension so just now what i did here is just an estimation but one thing for sure r is towards the left so let me redraw it okay on the diagram here now apparently apparently that means just now i draw the w2 long even though because maybe they say heavy i draw it, just draw it longer but actually there's another possibility the w here is shorter and the tension in the string here is much longer the magnitude is greater so if you were to complete your parallelogram so you realize that the resultant force of t and w is in this direction that means to say in order for the resultant force acting on the nail to be zero r has to cancel this the magnitude must be the same and in this direction so that will be your r so if we assume that so a will be a better representation but like i said uh, i can also give you an option where this is the weight okay and this is your r and this is your t so if this option is also a possibility that can be also the answer because more importantly r exerted by the wall is more towards the left that's what we know all right
So I hope if you come across similar question, you'll be able to do it next time. All right. Thank you so much.